Geometric probability is the second type of probability for independent variables that we're going to cover in this class. Uh, it's quite different, actually, than binomial, although what we'll do is we're going to start with that same binomial example that we started with with the parents, type O blood. This is exactly what we had for the binomial. And now what we're going to do is take the same information, or almost the same information, and reword it so that it's now a geometric probability question. Because like is true for <laughs> all of probability, it really depends on how the question is worded. The first thing that you'll notice when we start talking about geometric probability is there is no fixed number of trials. So we are going to get rid of that whole six child thing. Uh, with no fixed number of trials, we know it's not binomial anymore. The question now is not what's the probability that three will be of type O. The geometric probability question would read like, what is the probability that the first child with type O blood doesn't happen until their fourth child. So child one is not type O, child two is not type O, child three is not type O. Fourth child, first type O blood, blood type. So that's a geometric probability question. Geometric probability is all about when the first success happens. So like with this, this is a specific question. What's the probability that the first success doesn't happen until the fourth child? We can talk about the probability distribution, a geometric probability distribution. It's going to look and behave quite a bit differently than the binomial probability distribution that we saw before. And as a matter of fact, I think that's where I would like to start with this geometric probability. We'll start with this question. What's the probability that the first child has type O blood? So the first success occurs with the first child. This actually is pretty straightforward if we remember the information. Each of the children has 25% chance, 25 chance of having type O blood. So the first child has what probability? 25%. The real question is about what happens with the second child? Though before that I've been a little sloppy with my notation. Uh, really we could talk about probability that the first success happens with the first child is equal 0.25. We're actually going to have to talk about notation uh, and what we actually mean with that uh, soon. But the next question is, would we expect the first success happening with the second child? So P of 2 would be the probability that it's the second child is the first child with type O blood. Yeah, we have to be very careful with our numbers. So the first success doesn't happen until the second trial, the second child. Would we expect that to be higher than 0.25 or lower? And this is actually a pretty tricky question, and a, a lot of people find it counterintuitive. So let's think about this. And one way to think about this is to choose an extreme value. Like, what's the probability that it isn't until the 10th child that it wouldn't be type O, or that it would be type O? Would we <clears throat> expect it to be probable or improbable for that to happen? Well, let's kind of trace back to the beginning. We know the chance of the first child being the success, type O blood, is 25%. Well, by the 10th child, would we have expected that type O would have happened already or not? Well, with 25% chance, each child, 
You'd expect, that's one in four. By the time there are four children, you'd kind of expect it to happen at least once. So the fact that it hasn't happened until the 10th child, that's actually pretty improbable. You'd have expected a success long before the 10th child. You'd have expected typo long before the 10th child. So that's improbable, that's a low probability. So higher or lower? Ultimately, it's gonna go lower. So here we have a histogram, zero, one. We know that this is 25%. We know that way out here at a value of, of 10, it's gonna be really small. Right, it's going ultimately down. And do you think that uh, waiting until the 20th child before a typo would occur would be more or less probable? It'd be even less probable. It keeps going down. One thing that you have to be a little bit careful about is, do you think maybe it goes up, then down? Who knows? Well, we need to find out. So there's a second way of thinking about this that helps with that idea. And that's, use a really big P, right? Very high probability of success. So, you know, we're not talking about typo blood, but I suppose if we were, maybe we'll just make it up. 90% chance that, you know, any one child will have typo blood, right? For whatever the reason. So what's the chance that the first child will have typo? Well, 90%. Would you expect the second child to, to wait until the second child before you get typo blood? No, you, you would really expect it to happen, that first child. That's a very high probability of success. So the probability that it isn't until the second child is actually gonna be lower because really this is very probable. So P of one in this case would of course be 0.9. Probability of waiting until the second child, it's gonna be less than 0.9. It should have already happened in the first one. In a way it's, it's similar, it's just an extreme value. Here we have an extreme you know, X and here we have an extreme probability of success. And it really clarifies what's happening. Every step of the way, it gets less and less probable. And extreme value just makes it clear, even with the probability of success of 0.25, it's the same behavior. So it's gonna keep going down and down and down and down. And that's the shape of geometric probability distribution. The greatest success is, chance of success is always on the first trial, and as the number of trials goes up, the probability always goes down. Now something that we have to clarify that I alluded to earlier was this notation. Where before for binomial, this number meant the, the number of successes. But here in geometric probability, it doesn't. One is not the number of successes. 10 is not the num number of successes. 10 is the number of trials. So our horizontal axis on our probability distribution is actually N, not R. So it's quite different. Now this is still probability. Because we've been talking about, you know, it taking 10 trials before you get typo blood is low probability. You know, we'll take, you know, one or two. Oh, you know, I was thinking binomial probability. Another element of geometric probability <laughs> is this zero. Can there be zero trials? No, <laughs> there can't be zero trials. Uh, or to say it this way, what's the probability of their first, hap their first child having type O blood before they've ever had children? <laughs> there is no probability, it, well, zero, I suppose. It doesn't really exist. Here, I need to 
modify this so that it is actually the way it needs to be, which is like that. <laughs> this is the 0.25, right? Because you can't have zero trials and have an outcome. So zero doesn't exist for geometric probability. It starts at one. And another thing actually, different from binomial probability is, is there an upper limit? For binomial, we had a fixed number. There was a clear upper limit. Well, there is no upper limit. So the values for n is greater than or equal to one, less than or equal to infinity. Right. It goes on theoretically forever. Of course, it gets so astronomically small, it's ridiculous. But theoretically, it does actually go on forever. All right, so we've talked about probability distribution for quite a while. That's this B. We, we now know what the probability distribution looks like. The first interval is always the biggest, and it decreases. It starts at 1, goes up to infinity. Let's actually figure out how to calculate some of those probabilities. Right? And there's sort of good news and bad news. It depends on your preference. There's a formula which uh, we have for geometric probability, which is you know, different than the formula for binomial. For the binomial probability, uh, we went through a whole derivation. We spent the whole video doing the derivation. We're not going to do the derivation for geometric. I'm just going to give you the formula. Some people like that. Some people don't. But uh, that's how, <laughs> how we're going to run. All right, so here is the geometric probability distribution formula. There it is, basking in all of its glory. P, Q, and N are actually really the same as before. Right? P is probability of success, Q, probability of failure, N is number of trials. Notice that there is no R, where before N was, uh, wasn't what we were plugging in for our independent variable, it was R. Now it's N, that is our, our horizontal axis. So if I were to uh, use this formula to solve this particular question, it would look like this. I plug in my probability of success, my probability of failure. We were asked what's the probability of the first success not happening until the fourth trial. Plug in four for N. And it turns out it's about 10.5%. That, uh, that isn't until the fourth child that they get type O blood. Because right? it's more probable that it would have happened earlier. Well, we can take this equation uh, and actually get the numbers for the probability distribution. Uh, before we do that, of course, I can show you the uh, geometric calculator function. As I showed you earlier, this would be the geometric, geomet, that's an E, PDF. The syntax of it is P comma N. So I could geomet PDF, in this case probability of success is 0.25, for success in four trials, you hit enter, and you should get your 10.5%. Uh, and there's a geomet CDF, uh, which you know, combines the probabilities in the same way that binomial CDF uh, also does. So if we wanted to, we could Ha graph the probability distribution in the calculator. I still have 0 to 10. Now, like I said, now it goes on infinitely. We already know that 10 is pretty unlikely, so uh, it'll get pretty close to the horizontal axis. So we can, we can just use that. We could go 0 to 20 if we wanted to. Uh, in, in here, right, we're going to do, again, I find the easiest thing uh, is to use the Geomet PDF. 
right? We have our probability of success is 0.25. Right. Our number of trials until the first success, L1. And we have here, and of course, you know, 0% chance of it happening before any child is born. Uh, we could probably actually even delete that because it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Highest value is the first one. It drops off. Uh, let's... Uh, change our window settings. Uh, let's make that zero again. Make our class interval that. Point 0.3, that looks good. Graph, and there it is. Uh, there's the whole probability distribution. We could hit trace. All right, what's the chance that the first success isn't until the fourth? It's right here, and there's our Ten and a half percent. And there's the whole probability distribution. Now there's a second question which is a lot more interesting. How many children would they need to have, <laughs> comma, to have at least a 75% chance of getting a child with a type O blood? All right, so this, this is kind of working backwards. Right, so we're actually now looking for n. We're looking for a number of trials, right? Each child is a trial, quote unquote, I suppose. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So now we're looking for n. Uh, let's uh, look at the probability distribution again, which of course looks like this. It's very easy to draw geometric probability distributions. All right, now let's pose a few leading questions, right? Uh, is there a 75% chance of the first type O uh, when N equals one? Well, no, all right, we know that, that's 25% chance. How about when n equals two? Well, we can actually trace, uh, let's get our calculator back here. We have, um, you know, 0.1875 it looks like. So I'll put that up here. 0.1875 is our probability for uh, happening in the second. But let's think about you know the wording of the question, and think about the wording using some of the other vocabulary we've done uh, or used before. Uh, in particular, uh, the at least or at most kind of vocabulary. Because really, this is really asking, you know, at most two. Right? What's the probability uh, that the first success will happen, you know, at most two trials? Which, of course, we remember means really that's that or second, which is addition rule and we're gonna add them up. And in this case, if we add those two together, uh, we end up getting 0.438. So there's a 43.8% chance that the first success will happen at most two children. <coughs> Excuse me. So there's a trial and error element to this in which we just kind of keep going up until we get near 75%. Right? This is at least 75%, so if it's a little more, then, then we're done. Uh, again, I would use the calculator to do this. This is uh, much easier when you're talking trial and error 
it's much easier using the calculator. And there's even a function that helps us. Because really what we're doing is we're adding those two together. And then we want to add all three of those. And then we're going to add all four of those. We're going to, that's what that is called is cumulative summation. And there is, in fact, in list, and I think it's ops, number six is cumulative summation. How convenient. So what we're going to do is do a cumulative summation of L2. And there's our 0.4375 that we got before. And look, we can go right down. Huh. Is 68 at least 75 percent? Nope. Is 76 at least 75 percent? Yep. Ding, 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 ding. We have it. The answer to the question is five. How many children would they need to have? They would need to have five children to be 75 percent sure of getting type O blood. It's, it's a funny sort of reversal of the question. Uh, but it really comes down to, you know, again, summing the area under the curve, which, which is what we've done before. And I guess for completeness sake, there is uh, another way of doing this in which you can use the um, geometric CDF function. I'm just going to delete. Oh, I'll keep that. Because, of course, CDF means it's adding. Right? So if we use in distribution geometric oops, at the bottom, CDF, right? uh, our format uh, for CDF is you know, probability of success, which is 0.25, and number of trials, which in this case is L1. So as it comes down, like here, this is CDF, so it's going to add from 1 up to whatever this is, which is exactly what the cumulative summation was. And you see, we actually get the exact same numbers. So if you want to you know, add a bunch of, of, the, of the histogram, you could also use the geometric CDF function 